Hello friends, hope you are having a fantastic day today. So in this video, we are going to solve a very popular lead code premium problem called design tic-tac-toe. So without any delay, let's get started. We wants to design a tic-tac-toe game that is played between two players on an N cross N grid. So typically we play tic-tac-toe between a three by three grid. But in this case, we are just given that we need to create an N cross N grid. But needless to say, even if we have to do it on this grid, the logic is going to remain same and we are going to try to solve it in the optimized manner. Now we are given following the rules, but we all know what the rules are that a move is guaranteed to be valid, which means every single move is going to happen on a block that is empty. Second thing is that once a winning condition is reached, no more moves are allowed. This is the critical portion of designing this problem. That is, we at every single moment, we need to make sure that whether a winning condition has been established or not. And we all know what winning condition looks like. If any of the player is able to make any such row or column or diagonal fashion in three sequ sequential uh, values, then that player is deemed as a winner, uh, no matter whatever the case might be. So let's try to see that what is going to be the most simplest approach that we can take or the brute force approach to check if at any given position any single player has reached the winning condition or not well the answer is quite simple let's assume that any single player makes a move so in this case since the move is located at a non-diagonal square we only need to check that whether this uh, happens like all three zeros or whether these happens as all three zeros if this is the case we can simply deem this as winning condition and we can we can stop the game from there they're saying that this player has won if that is not the case then we can continue the game so if we have to do this well uh, this operation would take big off n time and we will have to repeat this n operation n times which means the brute force approach would yield big off n square time complexity and and this is just like the most logical thing if we have to do it in most primitive manner. Now let's try to see that what are the improvements we can make on this brute force approach. And for that, we will have to understand that how does winning condition work? So we are given three different options. Number one option is that any single player is able to complete either three rows. That is one option for the winning condition. Second one is any single player is able to complete the blocks in three columns. That is the second portion of the condition. And third condition is that we complete three diagonals. So uh, is there a way to make this solution faster using these three items for every single move that is being made? And we are trying to target to have better time complexity than big of n square. And the answer is quite simple that yes, we are able to do that. But for that, we will actually have to keep track that at any given position, any single move is made. Uh, how many corresponding rows with same uh, same symbol is currently present? That is number one thing we need to check. Second thing, how many number of corresponding columns have been filled? That is the second thing we have to check. And third thing, whether it is placed on a diagonal or not. So for that, we will have to use some indexes, which means now we have a way to identify any single box that how it is represented based on its row and column value. And we can find that particular cell. So what are the winning conditions? Number one winning condition is three rows. Number two is three columns and number three is three diagonals. So first let's assume that how can we keep track of three consecutive rows are present for any single player well for that what we can do is we can simply create an array with three sections which denotes that at every single row position where the value is currently placed and whenever any single value is being placed we simply update the value by one for that particular player and let me try to explain what i mean so let's assume that currently we have created a and uh, an array like this for any single player and we know that at every single position we are able to identify that box based on the current row and column position so let's assume that this is currently our rows array and let me clean this up a bit so it would make things more clear and currently we are only checking for three row condition so let's assume that for this one we currently have 0 1 and 2 as the values corresponding let's assume that currently player makes a move that is x 
so now we can define that this move has been currently made at row position 0 and column position 0 currently we are only keeping track of the rows okay so we are going to say that at row position number 0 there has been one entry that has been made for uh, this particular x character or the player with x symbol next let's assume that this player makes some random move and then this player makes this move again once again we can say that at row position 0 another x has been made so we will go to our row 0 and we will say that at this row's 0th position there has been one more move that has been added so whatever value is we are going to add it by one value so currently we can mark this as 2 let's assume that this player makes some random move and once again at the 0th row we add one more x which means now after adding this we will check the row position that is once again 0 so we will try to add it once again and we realize that this position actually had value number 3 at one of the locations or one of the index locations at row the moment we identify that we can say that this player with x character has actually won the game and we can stop the game over here because winning condition has been established this is the scenario in order to identify that at any given in, uh, uh, entry point whether a row has been created or not now let's try to understand the second winning condition that is three columns once again the logic is going to remain the same and let's try to redo this all of these uh, operations and once again now we are going to move in the column direction okay so let's assume that currently one player makes a move like x now this time we are tracking the value zero okay so let's assume that our second player makes the column uh, zero row over here so currently this 0th position is located at row 0 and column 1. So currently for even for our column we are going to have one more array and once again it is going to have value 0, 1 and 2. So at position number 1 currently all of these values are going to be 0. But at position number 1 we identify that one character has been made. So we will mark it by value number 1. Once again let's assume that this player makes a move here and this player makes a move here. So once again at column position number 1, 1 we are we have made one more move so we are going to add this by two let's assume that this player makes a move here and then this player once again makes a move here so in this case once again we find that three items has been added at the same position inside the row and that's why we are marking it as three so we can also say that a winning condition has been established so these are the two scenarios for rows and columns now let's try to take care of the third scenario or third third winning condition on how we are going to keep track of that and that is to keep track of the diagonals so let's mark the value 0 1 2 and once again 0 1 2 and we will try to mark for the diagonals now what are the squares being covered by diagonals so these are one set of squares and these are second set of squares now in order to identify that whether a value has been placed on a diagonal or not it is very simple the moment we identify that both row and column value are same we can just make sure we can just add one more entry that on the diagonal position one value has been added but the question is we actually have two diagonals and second diagonal is this one so for this one how do we identify if any single value is being added at these two these um, one of these three positions how do we mark as uh, this we can call it as anti-diagonal so we already established that for diagonal if the row value equal to column value if that is the case we can mark that one character has been added for that subsequent uh, diagonal but for anti-diagonal how do we keep track of that so for that let's assume that these are the squares we are talking about so let's see the position of this square so currently the row position of this square uh, sorry the column position of this square is equal to 2 and row position of this square is equal to 0 same way in this case the row position is equal to 2 and once again in this case the column position is equal to 0 so in both the squares if you do the sum of row plus column you would always find the answer to be n minus 1 and in this case n is equal to 3 because we currently have n by n grid or 3 by 3 grid so the moment we identify that this is row plus column is actually fulfilling the condition of n minus 1 or in this case because this is a 3 by 3 grid if row plus column is equal to 2 then we can for sure say that that particular uh, item has to be on a diagonal 
and uh, or uh, sorry has to be on an anti diagonal and for that we can also consider this uh, square as well because this is also row 1 and column 1 if we do some of this this falls to uh, this is 2 and this is 0 so for this particular one the uh, once again the sum is 2 and once again for this one the row position is 2 and column position is 0 so once again the sum is 2 and no other square is going to fulfill that condition let's try to check our theory let's assume that we talk about this square so currently this square is located at row position 2 and column position 1 so 2 plus 1 is actually going to be 3 not 2 so for diagonal we already know if row and column are same then it's a diagonal we can mark it if for a row and column is equal to n minus 1 then it's an anti diagonal and then we now let's see that how do we check for the winning condition in this scenario so now the logic is actually quite simple all we need to do is at every given moment we need to keep track of row and column position but now we don't need to check for the whole thing regarding uh, creating separate arrays because there can, there are only two diagonals possible a normal diagonal and anti diagonal so at any given moment if i enter a value on a diagonal it has to be added for that particular diagonal so let's assume let's start restart our game so once again currently i add one value x over here so currently the row and column position is 0 0 which means i will have to add one value to the diagonal so currently diagonal initial value is going to be 0 and anti diagonal initial value is going to be 0 but because i added one value over here i will have to do uh, add one value to the diagonal okay now let's add a 0 some rand at some random place so i add a 0 over here uh, once again again for the 0 we are also going to keep track of the same thing now let's add one more value on x now this x is currently located at column position 1 and row position 1 which means row is equal to column which means in the diagonal we need to add 1 so we can add value 1 over here but notice that this is also fulfilling the condition for anti diagonal as well because 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 so once again we are also going to add one more value to the anti diagonal now let's assume that for some reason we decide to add one value over here okay zero is here and then one we add one more value over here so this is two and this is zero so in this case we only update the anti diagonal and not the diagonal so once again anti diagonal is going to be two and now for some reason let's try to add one more value of x mm, let's add it on the diagonal so now this is 2 and this is 2 so this is diagonal so even on diagonal we identify value to be 3 or to be n so in this case we can consider that a winning condition has been established now let's try to reapply all of this logic that we just discussed for both the players side by side and then we will try to find some solution so now we have our uh, array or we have our image so let's try to put it over here okay let's try to give the index value 0 1 2 and once again 0 1 2 and now let's create one set of instructions for player x and one set of instructions for player o we are going to have initially our row array so we are going to store three values inside the row once again for column we are going to store three values inside the column once again for diagonal we are going to have just a normal zero and for anti diagonal we are going to have a normal zero same thing going to happen for row okay cool so now we have all of our answers and now uh, let's add first value x over here so this is zero zero so on the row position 0 we are going to mark one value on the column position 0 we are going to mark one value now row is equal to column which means we are also going to add one value to the diagonal and anti diagonal is going to remain the same now once again let's repeat the same exercise for 0 as well now 0 is currently placed on row 0 which means on the row we are going to add value 1 and column 1 so on column 1 we are going to add value 1 uh, this is not on diagonal or anti diagonal so we don't care next let's let's add x one more over here so this is added on row two so on the row sorry column two so on column two we are going to add value one and row zero we are going to add value one more so row zero already had one value we are going to add it over here so let's add value this becomes two and now this is two plus zero so this satisfies the condition for anti-diagonal so once again we are going to mark anti-diagonal as one as well now let's add one more zero over here 
Okay, so now zero is currently placed on the diagonal and also anti diagonal. So we are going to add one one on both of these locations. Plus currently zero is placed on column number one. So column number one already had one. So we are going to mark it as two. And this is row one. So row one uh, does not have any value. So we are going to mark this as one. Okay, now let's try to put one more x over here. Currently, this x is placed on uh, this is uh, row one and column zero. So row one is one, column zero is going to be two. Okay, and this is not a diagonal or anti diagonal. Now let's put one more zero over here. So this is row two and uh, column one. So on the row two, we are going to add one value over here. And in the column two or, or in the column one, we are going to add one value three. The moment we identify three, we don't need to do any further calculation because a winning condition has been reached. The zero has one and we can simply return that zero is the winner and this is the winning condition. And this game can keep on going on and on. And at eventually we, we, we would either find a draw or a winning condition, but we would be completing this whole solution in big O of n time only, nothing else. And you can notice that this is a much better time complexity compared to our brute force approach, which is awesome. Uh, if we see space complexity, well, space complexity is also going to be big O of n. Why? Because we are enabling the, these row and column arrays and they are directly dependent on the number of inputs. So this is the whole solution. I know I repeated a bunch of things many times, but the purpose was to explain you in the most simplest manner. And now let's see quickly see the coding solution. Unfortunately for this one, I won't be able to show you that how does code runs because I currently don't have lead code premium subscription because I ended my subscription and never renewed it. Uh, so I will show you the code and hopefully we can end this video. So this is going to be the coding solution for our designing tic-tac-toe. So first we have our class tic-tac-toe where we have the array for rows and array for columns. We also have an integer for diagonal and anti-diagonal and we simply have an integer for the size of the array. This is going to be our n cross n grid. Now let's initialize our data structure where we are simply providing the value of n. Based on this value of n, we are also initializing the two arrays that we want for rows and columns. Okay. Now we are doing something slightly different. So we have a method called move. And remember at every single move, we have to identify that whether a move, whether the game has ended or some player has won or not. Now the thing is for both of the players, uh, we are given the values as integer and we are marking that for player with value number zero is marked as uh, one and player with value number X is marked as minus one or you can do vice versa. Now the question is if we use minus one over here, how would we do the sum of two values? And for that we are actually using math.absolute function. So no matter what, we are always going to be doing the sum based on the absolute values. So it is always going to come up as positive integer values. So nothing, no issues. Now the idea is very simple for every single player's move, depending on the row and column position, we are going to update the rows and columns array based on the player value. And in this case, the player value has been either one or minus one. And in either case, because we are going to be doing absolute value so we should be able to find it if that is equivalent to size or not so we check for the rows and columns next we also update the diagonal value for that we simply have to check if row is equal to column if that is the case we simply update the value of the diagonal next we have to check for the anti diagonal as well for that we check row plus column and we have the condition that if the size is uh, if that is equal to size minus one in that case we also update the value at the anti diagonal and then we have a very simple condition that at any given moment we identify that whether the current row position or current column position in the rows or columns array is equal to the size or the current diagonal position is equal to size or current anti diagonal is also equal to size. If any of this position happens, we simply return the player saying that this player has won. If that is not the case and if no one wins, uh, then we can simply return zero. So this is a very simple code. And once again, I would be posting this code in our GitHub repository. The link is in the description so you can check it out from there. Thank you.